judge in New York agrees to postpone Donald Trump's sentencing in his criminal hush money case until after the November election. Yeah, it had been set for September 18th. It is now scheduled for November 26th, several weeks after the final votes are cast. Judge Juan Marchand says that he wants to avoid any appearance of interference, saying the court <coughs> is an impartial and apolitical institution. It comes as Trump continues to face several court cases while running for the White House again. Trump was convicted in May of 34 felony counts of falsifying business records to hide hush money payments just before the 2016 election. And joining us now to talk about the implications this has for the former president's campaign is the host of the political report here on WGN, Paul Lisnick. Good to see you Paul. guys. How are you? A shocking and, well, unimaginable <laughs> endorsement today from Dick Cheney. Yeah, I mean, Liz Cheney, we kind of expected, right? Mm -hmm. Just what, since committee. what she's been doing the last couple of years. But Dick Cheney, remember, Democrats call him Darth Vader, right? Now, they're going to welcome uh, this endorsement because they will welcome any, uh, any conservative Republican endorsement. Donald Trump has already referred to Cheney as an irrelevant rhino. We'd expect that. But, you know, Cheney's one of the most, I mean, when they wrote the word conservative, they put Dick Cheney's next, uh, name next to it. So, uh, you know, to see him as a rhino is just not very plausible. But I'll tell you, um, you can, some are surprised by it, some are not. I'm waiting to see whether or not that influences George W. Bush because we have not heard from the former president at all. And um, you wonder whether if his vice president speaks out, whether this might trigger the former president. What about Nikki Haley voters? Do you think they'll go away? Because when asked Nikki Haley, when they asked Nikki Haley, she didn't say she would necessarily come out and um, do any rallying for well, uh, the Well, except this for, weekend, she's going to appear on um, one of the Sunday talk shows, and I saw a clip of it, and she did say, if he calls me, he knows I'm prepared to go but for him. But she's not voluntarily going no, out there. No, no, she's not. But, but, you know, if Trump says, okay, I want you, and she goes, that kind of, you know, diminishes uh, that impact. So, you know, do her voters, do they, do they listen to a Dick Cheney or a Liz Cheney or an Adam Kinzinger and go in that direction? I'm not sure about that, um, but clearly if they were we're waiting for orders from, from Nikki Haley, they're not getting those. Well, another high-profile Republican from the past, uh, the son of uh, the late senator and POW, uh, uh, John McCain. Jimmy McCain. Yeah, he came out and attacked Trump over that uh, photo op at Arlington Cemetery on Labor Day. Where do you gauge uh, America's veteran support for Donald Trump right that, now? That is such a tough one because, look, Trump does have a lot of, of veteran support and people who are in the military. He has that. But uh, then you have, look, the McCains have had had a, a, a battle with Trump's for a long time, right? So in some ways, this is Jimmy McCain getting a little revenge for some of the things Donald Trump said about his father. Like, well, Why come out now? Well, it matters now. I mean, right? I mean, maybe prior to this or prior to election time. Yeah, why couldn't he come out four years ago? I, you know, it, listen, the McCains are, are, don't, aren't about stirring things up. So I think it may have been quieted. Now he, sort of, he's, he was an independent, so he switched to the Democratic Party for or, this election. Or could it be that Joe Biden was a good friend of the family? Well, it could be. Uh, yeah. But it's still taking a step, right? It's one thing to say that you're, you know, you, you just can't support Donald Trump, but to, to then register as a Democrat, say you're voting for Kamala Harris, you know, would John McCain have done that? You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, he might have, uh, but we're, we're, we're just, this is upside down land. So we're, we're just, you know, somebody's going to look back in the future and say, who did what? This is just not possible. Speaking of up, upside down land, a lot of people are bringing up the ageism again. Yeah. You know, they talked about it with Joe Biden, but now President Trump is going out there saying a lot of things that really aren't answering the questions that are being asked. Yeah, he was at the New York City Club uh, yesterday, the Economic Club, I should say, where he was asked about child care, and he just, I'll just invite our viewers to just watch a clip of what he said, because it's been described as word salad. It's hard not to describe it that way. Um, I mean, he puts himself out there as the expert on, on business, so I listened carefully, and it's really hard to take I don't know what he was talking about. He basically said tariffs will cover the cost of child care. J.D. Vance, in answering the same question in a different forum, basically said, well, we might need the help of grandparents, grandparents. And, and aunts and uncles to step in. None of that seems to be a plan for how you're going to tackle child care. Um, so we, we need to be, have more substantive answers from him on that and, and other topics. We'll and Kamala Harris taking the weekend to... to uh, get ready for the um, well, She's prepping, the and she, yeah, there are people playing Donald Trump. You know, the, the rules are coming up. Uh, we know on Tuesday, well, I'll be here with you guys. And it's going to be fascinating because with the mics off, um, she's going to hear him make these comments, but we won't hear it. So how will she respond to that? Will she address it? Or knowing that we don't hear it, will she just leave it alone? It's going to be fascinating to watch the dynamics will, of that. Will Trump be coherent? And, and, you know, this won't be probably as consequential as the Biden-Trump uh, debate, but what specifically will you be listening to? Well, and, and by the way, Mike, I didn't answer part of your question before, which is, 
with the ageism thing because yeah. it relates to what as yeah. Ray tapped me back into that, which is, listen, Biden appeared so elderly and, and so sort of not with it that it became a critical issue. And Trump appeared very, very sharp comparatively. Well, now that you have Kamala Harris, like her or not like her, appear sharp in what she says. Right? There's nobody who's saying she's, you know, having any any issues of, of men, uh, mental issues or anything like that. Now Trump is beginning to look more his age and is perhaps sounding for some a, a lot more his age. So that start of sh uh, start of sh uh, is going to show itself, I think, as time goes on. So we'll be watching what happens Tuesday night. D does he? How control is he? He says he's not preparing. I don't buy that. I think mm -hmm. he is preparing. And we know that Tulsi Gafford is working with him. So mm -hmm. maybe you know he's got his own. Maybe his version of preparation is not. I'm not going to go through a sample debate, but what I will do is listen to my policy people. That's a possibility. Uh, but I think that that Harris will be so well prepared on every issue. He needs to be prepared, and if not, we're going to see that in a glaring way. We'll see well, Tuesday. in the past, we always say debates don't matter, debates don't matter, don't they don't matter. But they obviously mattered this last debate for sure because that's when Biden it decided cost to put, him, It yeah. cost him the nomination. So how much will this debate matter? I think this one matters too, Micah. And I agree with you that oftentimes we watch a debate. Look, you can look at debate. Look, Al Gore beat George W. Bush in a lot of the debates, you know, and, and, and who ultimately wins the election, Supreme Court aside, uh, in that election. But the bottom line. Nixon line, Kennedy made a difference. Well, Nixon yeah. and maybe some of the shenanigans. Yeah, There's so many yeah. times you have to look at the shenanigan piece. Uh, <laughs> but but as far as this one, it's hard to imagine that this, that there, there are still people who say, I, I need to learn more about Kamala Harris. I don't know a lot about her, though. She's been vice president for the last three and a half years. So she, by the way, would be better advised to not spend your time going after Trump and insulting him. Let people know what your plans are, what your policies are. Um, apparently, a lot of Americans aren't quite sure. Mm -hmm. So this is her chance to do that. I do think this one makes a difference. Polling will show us afterwards whether okay. it did. Tuesday. Who's going to be on the show this weekend? So this weekend, we're going to talk more about the debate. I'm going to have Professor Suzanne Chad with me um, to chat with her. You saw a little bit of a clip with her uh, before. Um, the former Alderman George Cardenas, who's now on the Cook County Board of Review, is going to come in. He's suggesting circuit breakers to help people that don't make as much money to limit their property taxes. So we'll see how that goes. He presents it to City Council next week. He'll talk to us about it. And then next week on the midday, I always like to promote those interviews. On, on Wednesday, I'm going to interview a guy named Mitchell Bishop, who has written and is performing a one-man show on the life of Mike Royko. Now, that's mm -hmm. got to bring back memories Close for all of us. For sure. And for the younger people out there, look up Mike Royko. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, but it, I'll have him on the midday show. We'll talk about that play. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, guys.